going on, everybody? Welcome to the 50th episode Ooh. of Gaming with the Bros podcast. Number 5-0. Oh. Who would have thought, man? Who would have thought that a, a, a couple of kids, a couple of kids <laughs> in North Carolina, Virginia could make it to 50 episodes? It's crazy. Just just a couple of kids, a couple of goofballs. <laughs> well, it's funny because like I got the email from Buzzsprout, the that's the uh, the podcasting platform we use, but it was like, congratulations for publishing your 50th episode or whatever. Yeah. But I had, I had that one, like back when we first started, I think it was like on Thanksgiving or something or Christmas and we had taken a break or something like that. Um, so, so yeah, it was like kind of, it was kind of premature. <laughs> so, but, but yeah, we're, we're here, man. 50 episodes, almost, almost a year's worth of uh, episodes. It'd be what the year next week. Yes, yeah, because we started November tenth, so it'll be about a year. Um, yeah, next week. Yeah, this so crazy. I mean, it's been, yeah. it's been really fun. Yeah, I've, I've, oh yeah, I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, doing this every pretty much. I mean, we've done it every week except for what one, right? Every week for one. I, like, I even think in, so. Even in my travel across Florida <laughs> for like six, you're months, like, or, sorry, six weeks. You're like two month vaca- long vacation stint <laughs> yeah yeah we, we figured it out and oh man that was yeah even even that feels like forever ago talking about last of us too oh yeah i know florida and trying to like, push to finish that game before i went down and yep yeah it's it was been, it's been uh it's, been, yeah, a lot it's been a lot of fun yeah it's been it's been a lot of fun i mean and pretty i mean not really much issues other than like my recent mac trouble but uh yeah, it's it's been it's been a good time. I've I've enjoyed it. Yeah, it's been it's been pretty smooth. Yeah, I I think so. Going, uh, I mean, this is kind of unplanned or anything, but going forward, um, what Nick, what do you want to see where the podcast goes? Like, do you want more people on here at some point? Um, or like, I don't I don't know how how like any any like yeah you know yeah, I would I, yeah definitely like more guest appearances on here. To bring in a kind of a different perspective because we're not we're not big into the, like the 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 one v one hundred multiplayer games and you know Call of Duty. I mean, we used to be, but yeah, but that's still big now. Like Fortnite, Call of Duty, Apex, and it would be nice to have someone come in, and kind of you know talk about all the all the current current ongoings with those, and you know talk about how cool those are because I mean those are such cool games, and you know it's a it's a shame that we're not as into them as as other people but it'll be awesome to get to get people in who who love those type of genres yeah yeah i think i think that's like kind of like the big thing is uh maybe just getting some more guests or i don't know some interviews or something like that would be would be kind of cool yeah um but yeah definitely definitely have like a third like not maybe not every week or whatever but yeah every once in a while you know get a get a guest on the show and like you said get different perspectives from from kind of like people's i mean because i think we it's pretty well, well known that we kind of favor the Xbox family over uh, like PlayStation. So um, yeah, and yeah. That's, maybe... that's not to say that we don't love PlayStation as well. Like we both oh, have exactly. PS4 and, and yeah. the exclusives and, you know, have great things to say about those, but we've, we've always kind of, always kind of favored Xbox a little bit. In, yeah. In that, in that respect. Oh, it's because like they're kind of like the underdog, you know. You ever everyone loves loves yeah. a good uh, you know, underdog story. So, you know, everyone hates on like Microsoft and Xbox and but, but either way, um, yeah. I mean that's that's kind of where I want to see the show go and get get a few more guests here and there. Definitely community engagement as well. Just yeah, yeah. Just, I mean, it's, yeah, talk to the talk to the listeners. Get get a feel for what they're what they're feeling, what they're excited about. You know, it's. It's it's always exciting to see someone else excited. You know that's, that's exactly as yeah. simple as that sounds. It's it's really cool to see like things that people are excited about and the passions and yeah. That I'm I'm really excited to see see where we're at on episode 100. And yeah, be able to look yeah. back. It's crazy. Halfway there. Halfway okay. there. Um, how was uh how was your week, Nick? Dude, it was crazy. Work work is is starting to blow up yeah so i haven't i haven't played too many games aside from you know the pirate warriors demo and yeah and and some you know halloween halloween type games i've i've dabbled into 
I, I've and sorry, I jumped right into games. <laughs> you know, yeah, we we are a gaming podcast. Yeah, it's kind of what but you expect. I, I downloaded some like Halloween themed or I guess horror games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Game Pass. Um, one of them being like Made of Skur. Okay. And a few others, and God, none of them could hold my attention. Okay. And maybe I'm impatient, but just like, and this happens with a lot of horror games, but like the first hour of it is it's a lot of world building and of course yeah it, it builds up to that moment where you either you know meet the monster or you meet whatever like the villain is or you know yeah it's a lot of world building but, but when i'm not like completely sold on a game when i'm downloading it like i kind of want to get into the action yeah right away so like made of scur i didn't really get far into before i was like okay i think i'm good like I've seen what I what I wanted to see, so I've had I've had a lot of that. I I think I've had a lot of like game fatigue, just mm -hmm. due to the nature of Game Pass and like you have all these games that you can download, but you can never commit to one because you're like, well, what else yeah. is there? Yeah, because I mean, especially with like you said with Game Pass, like you're not you're not you don't necessarily buy these games, so like the the you're feeling of the feeling of, yeah the feeling of having to be invested because you spent money on this it's just kind of not there because there's been a few games on game pass where i've downloaded and they caught they caught my interest a little bit but i ended up falling off and was like you know what i'm okay with not finishing this because there's didn't buy it. yeah there's more stuff yeah i didn't buy it there's more stuff i can play or try and uh you know i don't have a ton of time to play you know video games all the time so i like i like to make sure that the games that i'm playing um you know pique my interest yeah and, and that's it too it's like i'll try a lot of games and maybe maybe one out of five games on game pass like sticks like i'll, yeah. I'll come across like final fantasy 15 which you know i love yeah yeah um but then you know i'll try you know something else that either takes longer to get into and then longer than i'm willing to put in or just you know just doesn't pique my interest and that's fine but i just feel like i'm kind of in a, a weird in-between stage of of games right now after after coming down from the from the sweet sweet highs of super mario 3d collection right <laughs> what's what's next you know because you know we're we're coming up on on next gen in a little over a week and i yeah i just don't know don't know what i'm gonna play until then but aside from aside from gaming my week has been good didn't do much didn't do much on halloween we we got like got invited to like a, an apartment party yeah but there were some people going like that we just didn't know and you know due to the uh due to the unforeseen circumstances of covid and not knowing what people's day-to-day -day lifestyle is that would like like for the people that we don't know we just right right didn't feel super comfortable going to a small apartment with like 10 to 15 people yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean it's, it's still like as we're getting kind of used to the virus and stuff like that like it's i mean other, other than your face mask you know just having to bring that wherever you're going um like you, i, I kind of don't really think about it anymore it just it's just kind of a part of our our uh like our world now and then yeah and then some yeah like in like that situation that that you were you know thought about being in or whatever mm -hmm. uh yeah you kind of have to like step back and be like oh maybe this probably isn't a great idea uh, you know if i don't know these people yeah. and stuff like that so it's, it's like one one common phrase i often refer to is like sure you might be over the virus like you might be done with it but certainly not done with you yeah and you know it could it could strike at any point so and just and just the fact that cases are going up so 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 much recently and it, yeah it's just kind of like a guilt that you feel yeah exactly like if you were if if you were to go out and have fun i'd feel guilty about it because i know that you know people are sick probably in part due to like due to what i'm doing by just going out and having fun and yeah because i mean forward. yeah because i mean you're not gonna be wearing your mask when you're in there right i mean hmm. you know, have, having some drinks and stuff like you're probably just not it's kind of you're not gonna be worried about it yeah um which is kind of like so uh Halloween, we we took the uh, the kids over to our parents' house, and um, Kellen off the show. I don't know if you saw the picture on Facebook, but 
uh, Kellen was like so hell bent on being a ghost. Oh yeah, I saw the ghost pic. So and then yeah. Brittany, Brittany bought a we bought a sheet, and she painted a, the boo face on it for Mario, mm -hmm. and it turned out it actually turned out pretty good. Um, well, but halfway through trick or treating, he just he couldn't see very well out of the holes, <laughs> so we took it off and like wrapped it around like a cape. Um, but he okay. had a blast. I mean, we did we didn't like. We didn't necessarily trick or treat for too too long. We, because there wasn't like a lot of people doing it. Um, it wasn't like the old neighborhood where it was just like a madhouse for like two hours. Um, but I mean they got a lot of candy and ha and had fun. And then we came back and uh, the neighbors had bought in pizza or whatever. So we had, we had a couple slices of pizza and then um, the mom and dad actually took the kids and we were gonna go out to. Uh, the local bar, um, the deck. I think you've been to. That's where Dad had his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but when we were riding through downtown, because I just wanted to see what it looked like before we actually, you know, got an Uber and stuff, uh, there was like a line out the door of like at least fifty people. So, Jesus. so we were like, yeah, you know, we're just gonna stay in. Like we ended up just, uh, we started like a fire and, uh, um, did like cornhole. Granted, it was like forty five degrees, but I mean, it felt pretty good with the fire going and stuff. Yeah, and you know, drink some beers and stuff like that. So. And then the deck would have been a good place to be, right? Because that's like completely outdoors. And I'm sure uh, that's why it was so crowded. Yeah, I mean, there's it's a, it's like they've got a lot of outdoor section, and then they've got the indoor as well. But um, I, and I think bars are still you you still have to do like half capacity or something like that or quarter of it. So I didn't know how long, and they and they close they still close at eleven here. So um, I didn't know how long we'd be waiting outside in the cold. Uh, so. We just we we decided to um kind of stay in and, and, and just chill with with no kids. It's so still still a good time. Nice. But uh, oh, yeah, I, I watched the 2018 <clears throat> version of Halloween. Okay, cool. With, with Jamie Lee Curtis. Gotcha. That's like okay. Yeah, that's like the the pretty new one, right? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like the the sequel to the original. Uh, right. Two, two Halloweens. It's pretty good. Yeah, they kind of they kind of like redcon <laughs> the the other ones that were kind of bad. <laughs> So, oh man, Halloween three is still the the black sheep of that. It's so weird, like series. the whole mask. Th yeah, it was very weird. But it's the one I remember the most for some reason. That's funny. I, I, yeah, it's, it's so interesting. Oh, yeah, it's, oh, yeah, it's that, yeah, it's yeah, that, that was a very. It's it's been weird though. Like, I mean, we we did a couple, we did pumpkin carving. It just hasn't felt. I haven't really felt like I've been in the Halloween spirit. Which like I mean yeah. after you after you grow up and stuff and, and and you don't have kids yet either, um, so it's it's kind of hard. It's kind of a weird period. To be yeah, it's 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 weird. It's like hard to get excited, and um, I don't know. It's just. And I also think like, and I had this like revelation the other day, but but COVID is making everything feel muted. Yeah. Like, any excitement for Halloween is kind of like muted by. Uh, by by knowing that you won't be able to celebrate like you could normally, so like I think normally yeah. I would I would like to do like pumpkin carving or or decorate to some capacity. Um, yeah, because I mean we were gonna take the kids up to like Kirstie Valley, like our local. Uh, you know they have like a like a sp spooky woods and stuff like that, mm -hmm. like a haunted forest or whatever. And um, we were gonna get tickets, but you have to you have to come at like a a select time and stuff like that. And the time that we were gonna go in was four. Which have been close to being dark, so we were just we just kind of skipped on it, um, but yeah, it's just been kind of like you like you said, kind of muted. Yeah, it's is trick or treating dying. Like, it's it's tough to say because like last year where where I lived, there was like a really bad thunderstorm, so like Halloween was again like non-existent last yeah, last year just because of the weather. Um, I think we, I think we were able to hit like one house, maybe. Um, I, it's hard to tell because, like, I'm not obviously I'm not trick or treating or anything. Yeah. So, so like, I only do it because of the kids. Um, but I mean, just at least where we were at, and in, in, in our parents' neighborhood. And, and granted, there's, it's not like the old neighborhood we lived in. There's a lot more older people there, um, but like almost nobody. Like it was like every sixth house or something, where people had, you know, their doors open for for trick or treaters, and even then, and half of those just had a bowl out, sitting outside. So it's it's tough to say whether it's due to 
COVID and people just want to social distance or, you know, maybe just people just aren't celebrating um, or care about celebrating. So, um, yeah. I mean, there's, there was kids out and stuff like that. So um, I don't think it's dying necessarily. It's just, it's just a weird year to judge it. It might be changing. Cause I know a lot of communities do like trunk, trunk or treats or yeah. like line up cars or, or go to like a parking lot or something and, and have a big exchange there. So, yeah, yeah. And then, and then I know around here in like Arlington and DC, they all go to the mall. Oh, okay. And all the different like kiosks and stores in the mall are handing out handing out candy. That's cool. So I think that's the big thing up here because there there aren't like a ton of neighborhoods. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So I guess, I guess it depends on on where you're at. Yeah. But I think so. What's your favorite Halloween candy? Uh, I'm a sucker for almond joys. I love those things. Almond joys. What the hell. I like I like I don't really like coconut like that, but like I just like I like those and like the whoppers, like the little like chocolate malt balls or whatever. Yeah. Those are pretty good. And then of course like, and I like I'm really not a big chocolate fan anyways, but like I don't know Starbursts are always good. Mm-hmm. Um, little yeah, two packs of Starburst. Like, yeah, little two packs of Starburst or you know some Skittles. Skittles are always fun. So mm. I like the mini in the chocolate the realm i like the mini kit kats or the kit crunch kats. bars yeah i had a crunch bar earlier it's pretty good yeah man, they, it's man classic hate on crunch bars a lot because it's don't classic have, like, that, they don't have that caramel flavor but ah, caramel's overrated yeah i think so too um and then non non chocolate you know skittles or starburst sour patch kids are always a win oh yeah yeah i mean i like any like non-chocolate candy, yeah aside from candy corn yeah, candy corn is disgusting. Die in a fire. Yeah, that stuff is disgusting. Oh, man. All right. Wait, how was, how was your week? Oh, it was good. I mean, other than, like, when we did the Halloween thing. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, just another kind of normal normal week at work. So <laughs> Another week in life. Yeah, another week in life of working from home. It's great. <sighs> but, um, yeah, let's, let's jump into what we've been playing. Um, like you, I haven't been playing a ton um i you you had mentioned hollow knight last week Mm -hmm. so i picked it up again and i got there was this one part that i was getting really frustrated on um the boss no it was it was just a a platforming part um i was getting really frustrated and i i I just about put it down for good and then like i i ended ended up beating it or, or finishing that part and then um i've kind of opened up kind of where i got to I've opened up and it's there's a lot a lot of areas for me to explore. So I think I'm like towards the end of the game. I'm about 15 hours in, 16 hours. So I'm thinking I'm like getting close to the end. Um, I just got the the dream nail. If that if you remember that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I'm getting pretty close-ish to the end. Uh, what was the platforming part? If you're able to explain it, <laughs> it was. It's it's after you get the like the, the 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 super dash or whatever it is that like just pretty much like shoots you across the screen which is awesome mm-hmm. um but it was just a part where you had to you had to do that and then you you hit like this this i don't know piece of land and you have to and there are spikes everywhere and you have to like jump over the spikes and then land and then super dash in between like two of like the the flying monsters i guess i can't remember what they're called um and then at the very end of that there's like five of these flying people and you have to you have to jump down and like do like the sword or like the nail jump yeah. or whatever and you have to do that across it's just it was kind of frustrating um oh man i don't remember that yeah it's 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 optional you don't have to do it but i just i didn't really know where i was going so i felt like i had to and then i think you ended up getting a charm or something so it was worth it but uh it was just like really frustrating and then and then finally i figured out where to go i had to, i had to look up a guide just to see, because the game's not like super. It doesn't exactly tell where to go, but I am. Um, I do want to. I definitely want to finish it, and then I'm really excited for. Um, was it Silk Silk Song? Silk Song, yeah. Yeah, and then, and then I was like, man, I really want them to make more Ori because, yeah. I, like, I just love these style of games. They're just so much fun to explore. Yeah, Ori, Ori, and Hollow Knight are like, they're pretty similar in terms. Yeah. Of oh yeah. Man, but yeah, but I've kind fun. of been longing for another game like that. Yeah. Finished. Um, uh, Ori. Yeah. 
God, speaking, so speaking of Silk Song, have you had the second fight with with um, that character yet? I just, maybe I don't know. I just remember having a lot of trouble on that one. On this, what what was the fight? What was the name of it? Well, it was it was that that um the main character in Silk Song, like the the person with the new with the needle, the girl. Oh, the uh the in in her, in her name like the bee or something like the wasp, or yeah, something. something like that. Um, I don't. I know. I know. I've fought in her. I don't know if I've fought in her again. I think I have, but maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, because um, there's that first fight pretty early on in the game. I need to go back. I need to go back and watch the trailer for Silk Song because I don't really remember it at all. Yeah. All I know is that you're you're traversing upwards. Rather than than going into the depths. Oh, okay. Which is pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah. Pretty um, close. Pretty close to the end. I think I'm pretty close. Yeah. Um, and then other than that, I checked out. Uh, I checked out Control, the 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 cloud based version for the Switch. Uh, which is cool because I never actually I never, I've never played Control. Um, mm-hmm. I know you had mentioned that you had. I forgot that you had it on Xbox. So I'll definitely be checking it out. Yeah. But when I played. Um, I chose the graphic version, so I think that really hindered my experience because, like, I mean, the game was like in the like the low low teens as far as frame rate goes. Like, it was just horrible. Oh, um, and did the camera like when you turn the camera, did it get farther than you wanted it to? I, I felt like the controls itself were like a little bit off. Okay, that's that's due to the streaming then. Because, so I, yeah, I just... started out, I started out in, in in graphical fidelity mode. Okay. And, and God, I was in a queue of like seven hundred people. Oh wow! Okay. Started and it took forever to get in, like like over an hour of waiting. Wow! I, I got I jumped right in. I didn't have to wait at all. I think I I think I tried to get in like a few like an hour or two after the the direct aired. Oh okay. And I just left it left it up while I was working. Um. But yeah, I tried that mode and it just it, it ran okay. Yeah. But the camera just felt off. Yeah, and, that's... and, and it was it was lagging a little bit. But then I tried performance mode and it ran perfectly. Like okay, it cool. Ran better than it ran on the Xbox. Wow, well, that's good to hear. And, and granted, when I did the performance mode or like when I played through the full demo and, and performance mode, I had my Switch docked. And I had it hardwired into my, to my um, Ethernet. Okay. To my router. So it ran perfectly, and then and then I played it in the quality mode again with my Switch dock, and it, yeah. it worked fine. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, now that I've played it, I mean, I'll just I'll just play it on the Xbox or whatever. But yeah, um, just get ready for, for a lot of frame rate drops. Um, since you're playing on the base Xbox. Yeah, I might I might just wait. And play yeah, it on the wait, uh, yeah yeah I'm just gonna wait and play it from the Series X, um. But but yeah I mean that's that's cool that they've got those options because uh, I don't think something like that would be able to run on the, the Switch, <laughs> so no no way no that's way. Would, that's pretty cool that they that. they started because it was kind of random it was like that and like Hitman Hitman was Hitman Three is coming to to cloud base yeah um. So yeah, kind of kind of random, but uh, but cool that it's there. Yeah, glad glad it's an option, and we can get into this a little bit. But it, it definitely sets up the switch for for next gen. I think. Yeah, yeah, especially yeah, especially with the option, rumored. At least. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, especially with the 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 rumored Pro version coming out like sometime next year. Or so, so yeah, that that that's a cool option that the switch has now. And it's also it's also really cool that they they like make you play the game for you know the length of the demo at ten minutes or something yeah before you can buy it just to make sure you have you know a good connection yeah a yeah good connection yeah that's that's pretty cool I'm sure you could get by with a pretty low internet connection if you're playing in in performance mode yeah yeah but if you're if you're wanting to do like the you know the ray tracing graphical fidelity mode then then you need to have like very very solid internet and it's it's hard with the switch because it's very limited in, in the highest 
um, the highest download speeds you can get. I mm-hmm. think I've only maxed out of like 60. Well, on the Xbox, I can get like 250 or 300. Exactly, yeah. So it's it's in that category where I think a Switch Pro would would definitely benefit, even yeah. if there's better wi- like the better Wi-Fi receptor or whatever whatever it is in the Switch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then of course I checked out uh Hyrule Warriors as well. Yeah. Um, download that was a, a nice little surprise. What a game! Um, yeah. Which which I, I I thought was very smart because I think I think a lot of people. I mean, I thought about I liked the first Hyrule Warriors. Um, this I mean the story was kind of like non-existent and it was, mm-hmm. um, but I liked it for for what it was. Uh, but this I mean. Man, I loved it. I, I like it's it's beautiful. I mean, it's got the you know the Breath of the Wild engine, so it looks great. Um, all the all the cutscenes and stuff are really nice too. It, like it just looks really cool. Um, yeah, kind of unexpected. And then as far as gameplay goes, I mean, I mean you got to play as Sheik, Zelda, and uh, Link, of course, and they all have like different abilities and stuff like that. Uh, or, or yeah, Sheik, right? No, it's um, Impa, Impa, it's Impa. Right, Impa. Cause she is, she is, she is Zelda. It's Impa. Uh, yeah, because she she is Zelda at some point. Um, yeah. But they all have like different abilities, and they can all use. And, and it's cool that you still they still incorporated the, the tablet or whatever. I, I forget what they call it in the game, but you can you know still use like stasis and, uh, you know the stuff magnet. like that, the magnet stuff. So. Yeah, it, yeah, it was nice to have all those options, and um, I mean, it's it's like a hero, like a like a you know a warriors game. It's you're killing like tons of enemies, and of course, like the only enemies that are really gonna hurt you are like kind of the bigger ones, or, like the boss. The other ones, they just they kind of just, just stand yeah, there. Fodder. They're just fodder. They just stand there. They don't really do much. Um, but yeah, it was. I mean, it was cool. Like I guess spoilers for the demo, but uh, you end up fighting a guardian, uh, which was oh, yeah, which was really was... cool. That, that was like a very unique situation for like a warriors game because you had to run away from it and set off those two traps and then and then you get to battle it and it's like god this is so yeah. cool and it just it kind of like canonically it kind of makes sense because um with breath of the wild like link was a lot weaker than he was 100 oh, yeah. years ago so this kind of portrays his strength yeah in a way that is yeah it is awesome like and then every every character plays differently too yeah exactly in the demo at least um i i didn't ever actually check out zelda how she played i just tried i think oh, i just played as mm, i just played as impa um yeah zelda's zelda was tough to play as because you're not actually like doing any physical attacks mm-hmm. you're doing mm-hmm. a lot of stuff with the um the the sheikah slate so gotcha a lot of, like magnesis and Oh god, I can't remember what the other ones are called, but yeah, and uh, it, I really like the fact that they gave you kind of like a of how like the overworld works. So like you you have like a big map of um, Hyrule, and like you can do you know like little quick missions or whatever, like kill three hundred l- you know the Lizalfos or whatever, uh, like in three minutes or something. So there's like a bunch of stuff like that, and then gathering you know monster parts. They still have that in this game. And you can, you know, give it to the towns or whatever to kind of get them back up on their feet. And then you can start, you know, shopping from the towns and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So um, I, I really feel like it's going to have a lot of kind of meat to it other than, you know, other than like the base uh, base story. So I don't know. For what I played, man, I really and really I was already excited for this thing just because like, it's, I mean, it's it looks so cool. And but after playing it, yeah, I'm super yeah. excited. Yeah, I'm I'm really pumped. There were a couple frame rate drops. Yeah, yeah, which is expected. I mean, yeah, it's good. got so many. The, the Warriors game, and with the Switch hardware just being a little dated. Yeah, exactly. Um, but let's let's talk about the story a little bit, and this is gonna go into mild mild spoilers. But the the game starts out with with you or with. I guess Zelda's about to get attacked by like all the guardians, and then she sends a message back in time. Yeah, I think yeah. And then that little guardian wakes up and jumps into this portal, 
Mm-hmm. And or no, she's yeah, she set up a portal, and then the guardian jumped through the portal, and it sent the little guardian back in time. So this is weird because it's definitely not something we saw in Breath of the Wild, and yeah, you know, having time travel in in this <laughs> game is going to be a little funky, and and who knows if it's going to be canon or or not, but. Like what do you what do you how do you think the time travel is gonna work? Like do you think they're gonna gonna stop anything that's gonna happen? I just think it's part of the story. I think we're kind of getting I, I don't I don't think it's gonna change like how Breath of the Wild s- started or like change that. Like you know what I mean? I, I, think I don't it's think still it's still gonna end the same. I th- I still gonna think I think it was just part of the story. Yeah. Um, I, I could be wrong. I mean, this this might be like its own separate, you know, completely separate universe from, you know, what we know at you know know of in Breath of the Wild. So I mean, it could be something on its own. But um, I don't I don't think they're gonna change the the story of the first Breath of the Wild at all. But I don't know. Do you think they'll bring any non-canon characters via time travel, like kind of? time travel mechanics or anything weird like that coming in through portals or i don't know um i kind of i mean i kind of want this i kind of want this to be canon um but if it's not then it's it's not a big deal but um i i think you'll be able to like maybe after you beat the game you'll be able to unlock you know characters from other zelda games i don't think they'll be in the main story though yeah i think it'll just be like its own yeah that'd be a good way to do it right you could just like yeah, you unlock them at the end, and then you could play the game with them or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Isn't canon, but you've already you've already played the canon version, so it doesn't doesn't matter. Right. Something yeah. something I've been thinking about, and I I think would be really cool if the game ended this way. But like, so we we know how how it's supposed to end, where you know Ganon Ganon wins. Yeah. I think it'd be really cool if you know obviously the you know sending the guardian back in time doesn't work and they still lose, but for the last battle. You get to play as Ganon, and oh, that'd be pretty cool. And you wipe and just like wipe everyone out. That would be pretty or, like, awesome. Play as a guardian or something like that, and go through and yeah. just demolish everything. I, th- I think that would yeah, be that, like that would be 10 cool. Out of ten ending to a game. Yeah, that that would be super cool. I mean, they can, yeah, it, let, let, let us play as a guardian or or something like that. That that'd be yeah, that'd be pretty awesome. Yeah, play as like your worst your worst nightmare in Breath of the Wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that'd be pretty sick. Um. But yeah, I'm 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 super excited for it. Uh, it it seems like it's gonna be a lot of fun. So, I'm also kind of glad that, and this is a a news a news piece for us, but kind of glad that Cyberpunk got delayed because now I won't um, feel obligated to rush into that game. Exactly. Yeah. Or to or to or to go from Cyberpunk to to Hyrule Warriors, I can just kind of enjoy this game through and through because I'm sure it's gonna be like a long game, kind of like. Um, kind of like the first Hyrule Warriors was. Yeah, yeah. Just have a lot of content. Exactly. Yeah, so really excited, man. Really really pumped for this game. Yeah, I am too. Yeah, I'm I'm it's it's it was a nice it was a cool announcement when it got announced and it was like kind of like a nice surprise, but yeah, after after playing it, um yeah, I, I'm pumped. I'm pumped for it. Yeah. Even more so than I was before. Um anything else you've been playing? Yeah, actually I I, I dove into Prey. Okay, cool. Is I, this, was this the first time playing Prey or No, I, I had played it and don't don't tell anyone this, but <laughs> I I used Gamefly oh, in twenty seventeen and I went to send the game back. Yeah. And they said they didn't receive it. Okay. I, like, well, I sent it. Like I, because I sent it through the mail. Or I yeah. Put it in my like drop off box of my, at my apartment community. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, we didn't get it, but it's okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and I like went and checked my mail one day, and it was still in there. Like the oh, game gosh. was still in there, and I think I had already canceled my subscription at this time. Yeah. Whoops. So I'm just gonna keep it. Yeah. Because... Why wouldn't you? I mean, it's on Game Pass now, so I mean. Oh, it is. Or... I think it is, unless no, they no, took it not, off. It's not on Game Pass. Oh, they took it off. I guess. Yeah. I okay. Guess so. Yeah, because that's that's when I played it. Uh, I think sometime last year. 
Um, I, I played it through Game Pass. Gotcha. Yeah, well, I, I, I'd only played like an hour of it, and I got back into it and, you know, figured out where to go. It, it yeah. really runs really well. Yeah, it's it's great. I, I thought it was a fantastic game. Yeah, I'm really, really liking it. I love all the mimics. Some people say they're a nuisance, but, like, I, I liked finding them in random places and yeah i was getting a little freaked out by them yeah i mean it's like it's 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 definitely i mean it's i mean it's nothing like the first prey um right. completely completely different uh but yeah it's like definitely it's like a mix of bioshock and like alien isolation it's really cool mm. yeah yeah i'm really liking it i think i'm gonna finish it yeah if i can play some more of it this week and yeah the the uh not to spoil anything but the ending is really it's a nice like kind of like m not m night Shyamalan like heavy twist at the very end it's pretty cool he was dead the whole time <laughs> he was dead but yeah it, it was cool he, he he was the prey <laughs> the entire time <laughs> the prey but yeah so I'll, I'll i'll hopefully finish it um or, or be able to finish it before the the new console yeah, I think it's like a I think it's like a fifteen hour game or something, fifteen, sixteen hours, something like that. So it's it's a nice it's, it's it's a nice hefty game. It's fun. Yeah, though. I also didn't know it was made by Arcane. Yeah. Studios. Yeah. So yeah, big yeah. Dishonored, love Dishonored. Yep. And which is doing what are they doing? The Death Loop. Next year? Death, Death Loop. Loop. Yeah. That's a PS5 exclusive, probably soon to not be one. I don't I don't think they've touched on that yet yeah i don't think they can i think i think those yeah i don't know maybe that deal is already done uh i bet i bet i bet it'll come to the xbox eventually though i think it might be a time exclusive the the deal the deal doesn't officially close until january yeah so they can't like legally say any any future plans for for bethesda yeah, exactly. So, like, yes, the day after they'll be like, "Hey, guess what? Sky or the next Elder Scrolls Xbox exclusive." Yeah. <laughs> We're taking everything off of the PS5 store, which is great. Like, how much do they pay for for this company? Like a billion? Seven, bil- seven, seven billion. billion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's no way that the, that the next Elder Scrolls isn't going to be Xbox exclusive. There's no way. I don't know, man. Xbox is always about like having having games for the people, but it'll sell consoles if, if someone if. Uh, if someone has, and granted, PC, PC is, you know, people got PCs as well. But if you're on the fence about an Xbox, and they and they say Elder Scrolls is exclusive to Xbox Series X and Series S, it'll, it'll sell it. It'll sell consoles. But do they need to sell consoles with Game Pass and? Well, yeah. I mean, if they're not, if they're, I mean, X, like Microsoft, they're a man, they're you know, they're a manufacturing company. They they sell they sell consoles. So like. If they, if they don't care about selling consoles, then why why do this exclusive deal? Why why still make consoles? Like, why don't you just put the the, the Game Pass and Xbox Live or something on everything, um, and then just stop making hardware? Yeah. So, like, their number one goal is to sell hardware. I mean, yes, like they're they're super into to Game Pass and you know stuff like that. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's about hardware, and uh, I think this acu- acquisition is going to sell hardware for them. But I mean, I could be wrong. They, they may just put it out on everything like Minecraft, but I think something like Minecraft is a, a little bit different of a beast than Elder Scrolls. And I think I don't think Minecraft sells consoles. Like it's Elder Scrolls oh, will. That's why. That's why I bought an Xbox. One. <laughs> I wanted that Minecraft. Minecraft and Connect. Exactly. Know? But yeah, I think Elder Scrolls, Fallout, stuff like that will sell consoles. And it, and if it's only going to be exclusive to PC and Xbox. Uh, I think I think people will buy an Xbox for it, and then they'll then they'll be like, been waiting ten years. Yeah, and then they'll be like, well, let me if I've got an Xbox, let me go ahead and jump into this Game Pass thing and see what the hype's about. And then they're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And then there you go. So yeah, that simple. It's that Seven simple. Seven billion dollars later, and they finally figured it out. Seven billion. Seven bill. <laughs> that's all it. Hey, that's all it takes. <laughs> that's all it takes. Uh, you want to get into the news? Yeah, let's jump into it. This week, we got some good, some some good quality news this week. Yeah, Coming so uh, the final moments before before the launch. Yeah, so uh, uh, PS Five embargoes lift 
lifted. So um, a a lot of, uh, yeah, partially a lot of streamers and YouTubers and uh, websites have been getting um, the PS5s in and and kind of giving their quick review on it. Um, I, I was listening to the the Bombcast earlier, and they are like really high on the controller, which is like kind of like the biggest thing that I've like been curious about because, I mean, as far as like you know the numbers and like sp- the speed and all that stuff. I mean, yeah, I guess the Xbox Series X is a little bit more powerful, but like. At the end of the day, kind of who cares about that kind of stuff? Like it's it's kind of about the the controller, and um, I, I think the new I think the controller looks really cool. Um, I really want a like cold one just because a lot of people say it just feels more like a Xbox controller because it's, it's a little bit bigger. Um, of course, it still has like the 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 same sticks and stuff like that. But um, yeah, people have been really liking it so far. Yeah, it seems like the haptic feedback is kind of like real cool. Um, yeah, kind of astounding how cool it is, and yeah, I really want to, man, I really want to, really want to feel one in my hands. Yeah, it sounds pretty awesome. And then everyone's been talking about like the, the very first level of Astro's Playroom. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you know the just all the intricacies with the controller in regards to what you're doing in that level mm-hmm. is. Yeah, very, um, very immersive, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of sounds it's like when it, when when the, to hear about. Well, like when the Switch first came out, and you you know you were playing um, oh, what was it, one two Switch, or whatever, and like kind of like yeah. using like the HD Rumble and stuff like that, and how cool that was. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, like we'll see how long this stuff really. You know, I mean, there's it's hopefully it's not more gimmicky than anything that developers really use it like make it really cool and stuff like that um right because i mean like the like the touchpad was cool at first when that was first announced and but developers didn't really use it for anything other than like a map button um i think like naughty dog is really the only company that really made some cool stuff out of it um with the guitar you play the guitar with yeah with yeah with the guitar and and last of us 2 and um stuff like that so uh but yeah, I hopefully they did some stuff with Uncharted as well. I can't remember what. Yeah, I think they probably did too. Um, I can't remember what it was though. But um, so yeah, it, it really seemed like only a very, very few developers really did something cool with it, other than it being like another button. But um, yeah, I mean it, the controller sounds pretty awesome. Yeah, controller sounds awesome. PS Five still huge, still very large. Yeah, it's it's very weird that do is is. I think Astro's Playroom and Demon Souls are the only PS5 exclusive stuff. Um, mm-hmm. So that, that's interesting, but I can't wait to see like Demon Souls and like what people think about that. Yeah, man, that's like that's like the game I would want to play, and you know, I'm I'm a little sad that the Series X doesn't really have any exclusives exactly coming out for it, which is a bit of a bummer, but. Um, yeah, man, I wish I really wish Demon Souls was was like on different platforms. Maybe it will be eventually. But, yeah, maybe we'll see. But that game looks super awesome. Can't wait to like read reviews on that. I'm sure they're gonna be glowing, glowing reviews. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure uh, it'll be it'll be good. Um, you wanna read the next one? Yeah. So <laughs> after promising that no more delays would happen cyberpunk has been delayed again to to december 10th and that's a three-week delay so not too long but (sighs) apparently apparently upper management didn't tell anybody because even even the social media head was like just didn't know that the game was being delayed and they had to go back on to a bunch of their old tweets where they said the delay wasn't happening and like oh never mind yeah because like a lot of people were screenshotting like all the the twitter stuff from from their twitter account and yeah it just like because i think they found out as soon like as as the general public found out so right which is never good (laughs) yeah that's just bad management um and i and i feel i really do feel for the employees because they you know they've already been on like super crunch mode of course and they've probably been on crunch mode all year so now it's another Right. you know three weeks or or what what was the original launch november seven what was it november nine seven 
19, Seven, 19. 19. Okay. So yeah, like another three weeks of like just hardcore crunch uh, right around the holidays. So, I mean, that I feel for him. Um, that sucks, man. I, I don't know, man. I that really sucks. I know this game is super hyped on, but I, I just like, I'm at like zero now. I, I think I might just wait until the, the, and I, we have been kind of texting back and forth earlier about it, but um, yeah, I think I might just wait for this game um, for it to come out on like officially on next generation because I just, I just don't have any hype level for it at all. Like I, I already didn't um, even when it was supposed to come out back in what April. Um, mm -hmm. So I, yeah, I don't know. Like I've I've seen like I've kind of haven't really been keeping an eye on this game. Um, I haven't seen every video out there is out there for it. Um, so yeah, I mean I know it's CD Projekt Red and they did The Witcher, which was incredible. But yeah, I just I'm not I don't have any interest in this right now. I mean, maybe that'll change when it comes out, but just all these delays, like it kind of. I, mean, I don't know if I'm necessarily it's worried it's that, the, that the game is going to be bad or anything. Um, but yeah, it's a super buzzkill. Like, and for someone who didn't have any, you know, I wasn't like super hyped for it. Like I just have zero hype now, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's tough, man. Like, I, I think I like this game a lot more in theory. Yeah. Than I actually do in watching gameplay videos. Because like the site, like the cyberpunk world is cool, but I, I but at this point, it's already kind of overdone. Mm -hmm. You know, like like Watch Dogs does a lot of that kind of stuff. And, you know, I can't think of any other games right off the top of my head. But just that kind of, like, weird, like, neon, neon kind of, you know, edgy game. And, yeah. And I feel like Cyberpunk is, like, relying on that and leaning into it a lot. And I'm excited for it. I just don't – I don't know how much I'm going to like it. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure, like, I'm sure if once I play it, I'll like it, but just, I don't know, I just don't have any hype for it anymore, <laughs> so it's just, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll probably just wait and see the reviews first, um, and maybe watch, catch, like, a stream or something of somebody playing it, and just kind of see what it is, and then I, I might pick it yeah. up based on based on that, but I, I do not think this is a day one for me, um, so I don't know. And for those of you who are who are wondering, like, oh, but but this game went gold. Well, apparently that doesn't matter because you know day one patches are going to come in super hot. Oh yeah, yeah. Current gen because their current gen is what's causing the problems and and obviously performance is a big issue with current gen with the with the game of this of this size and yeah capacity. So it sucks that that this game is being delayed because of current gen when in all in all sincerity they could have just released the next gen version on november 19th and then released current gen on december 10th and it would have been fine yeah i think people would have been would have been okay with that because with there not being much yeah i mean people are gonna be hungry for for play, for something new so after like the initial launch of these game of, of the next gen and people will get their demon souls and their spider-man and stuff like that like people are, you know, people are gonna be itching for something to play the next the following month. So, so yeah, that make that makes sense. But, eh, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Um, who knows, man? And then of course their their stock is also down like twenty five percent, which which makes sense. I mean, they've had so many delays this year that, yeah. So, that that makes sense. Um, with far all, their, all the reports on insane crunch. Have been yeah, exactly. As well. Um, Far Cry Six got delayed until next fiscal year i think it was what's supposed to come out in february um so yeah. i think i think ubisoft's fiscal year is from what m m april to march mm -hmm. um so that could be i mean like literally any time between <laughs> april and march of 2022 so um who knows I, I didn't think that this game was going to come out in february it kind of seemed like too soon after them announcing it um Right. I'm, I'm thinking it's more going to be like an October game next year, but but who knows? We might we might get also, a little bit earlier. What else got delayed? Tom Clancy's something something quarantine got delayed. Oh, the yeah the the expansion to um Siege. Uh yeah, Tom the yeah, Siege quarantine whatever that expansion got delayed as well, um, which Siege is now on. Um, 
on Game Pass. So I was, I was kind of wanting to try it. Um, maybe. Yeah, me too. I was like, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I might, might check it out. It's gonna run at it's gonna run at 120 FPS on. Nice. On the Series X. Sweet. On PS5. Sweet. All right. Well, let's let's dive into this uh, Nintendo partners joke that we got. On, yeah. Uh, either Wednesday or Thursday of last week. Can't remember which day, but this was a pretty good partners direct, and it is the last one that they're doing. Yep. And in my opinion, they kind of went out with a bang. Yeah, it was really good. it was it was a surprise as always. Um, and yeah, it was a it was a good one. Uh, I was I was pleasantly surprised. I mean, we got. Uh, some more information on Bravely Default. Um, you know, we got kind of like a, a look at all the, uh, what are they called? Asterisks or whatever, but they're like the jobs. Um, got to look at that. Uh, it comes out in what, February, right? February 12th, maybe? Yeah. Some, something like that? Sometime in like yeah, mid, February. mid. Okay. It's... So I feel like that's like a good yeah, spot for it, right? From, from 2020, but. Yeah, I mean that's not bad. Yeah, I think that's a good spot. I mean, yeah. we got we got that coming out in February. Then we have um, uh, Mario, Mario, Super Mario 3D World yep. coming out in March. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's a good time for it. Good time. Yeah, yeah, so I might pretty, pretty excited. I mean, they have, they have like. Hey, go ahead. Go ahead. What was that? You okay? You go ahead. So you go ahead. No, no, I wasn't saying anything. Your, your, your mic had kind of like glitched out on. But yeah, I, I can hear you now. Yeah. But go, okay, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, the um the bravely default team got. Oh my god. No, you go ahead. No, the bravely default team got twenty thousand responses from their from their survey. Yeah. So, yeah, they've they've obviously implemented some changes, which is which is good. I mean. I didn't love the demo because it was a little hard and a little yeah, that's, for a demo, but yeah, that's what that's what a lot of people like yeah, responded. Yeah. So that's cool. It's cool. Yeah, so it's good they're taking that into account. Exactly. All right. What else? What else? What else? Am I on a little bit of a delay? I might be. I might be on a delay. You might be. All right. Respond as soon as you hear this. I hear this. Yeah, this is like a it's like a three second delay. Oh no. Okay. All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll go from here and figure it out. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, what else? We we got we got the announcement of Control, the uh, the cloud version coming that we talked about earlier. Hitman as well. Um, we got to look at uh the third No More Heroes, um, which I've never played any of the No More Heroes games, which one and two are also on the eShop now. Um, so if you've never played them, you can purchase them, but how, how did you like the, uh, from what you saw? Um, yeah, No More Heroes 3 looks pretty cool. It looks really stylish and, you know, it looks like it's going to be slightly open world, uh, similar to the first two games. I, I only, I've rented No More Heroes 1 and played a little bit of that one. So I haven't, I haven't, you know, kind of gotten to either one, but I might pick up the first one and just play through and say i like it before yeah the, before the third comes out but you know I, I hear these games are pretty wacky you know yeah that's what i feared humor yeah a lot of over the top action and yeah i kind of excited just excited for this game to finally come out because it was it's been a while i guess it, yeah it was kind of teased back when the when the switch was announced like during that first presentation but that was really for for that um that over the top mm-hmm uh, no more heroes game, but people have been waiting for No More Heroes three for a long time. So, yeah, yeah, it's coming out twenty twenty one. No, no specific date yet. Right, right. That makes but, sense. But it's it's cool that the first or two, cool that the first two are coming to the eShop. Oh, they're already on the eShop. Yeah. Well, and what else we get? We got a couple other like kind of indie, smaller indie stuff. I can't remember exactly what it is. I'm sure you've got it pulled up. We've got part time UFO. And uh, a look at Phoenix Rising, or yeah, Phoenix Immortal, Immortals Phoenix Rising. God damn. Yeah, that's title, man. Yeah, it's yeah, it looks like a Breath of the Wild kind of clone. Um, but I heard it doesn't have weapon degradation, which is which is kind of cool. I, I wasn't that wasn't a big fan of that in Breath of the Wild. 
Um, but but yeah, it looks. I don't know. I, I don't know. It looks. It looks okay. We'll see. It comes out in December, so it's not not too far away. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that, that's pretty much it. I think there are a few other things that probably won't interest either one of us. So. Yeah, and then of course they ended it with the uh, the Hyrule's demo um, being available later that day, which we you know we talked about already. But yeah, that was a nice little surprise they dropped at the end because um, I think it was very smart for them to release the demo for it because. I think a lot of people might have been on the fence about it just because it's, you know, it's a Hyrule's Warriors game. So I don't know. I think it was definitely smart. Yeah, I, I like these demos. I like these demos that Nintendo's doing and you can, you can carry over your save progress. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the best so, part. Right. Like I don't have to play through like the first hour or hour and a half again, which is really nice. Really, really thoughtful. Yeah, <laughs> um, but but this I think this demo just kind of shows how different the game is already from from Hyrule Warriors. Yeah, kind of based off the story and, and scope. So yeah, uh, super pumped. Like we like we talked about earlier, super pumped for this game. Yeah, I can't I can't not wait but, for it. Yeah, yeah, really, really excited. It comes out November twentieth, so that's that's twenty days from now. Yeah, exactly. Looking cool. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it from that direct, uh, solid, solid direct end on the year. Um, that'll, I, honestly, that'll, pr- I don't see Nintendo doing another, I know, I know they said this is the last partners direct, so I don't see them doing another regular direct. Um, but who knows? Anything's possible. Um, but, uh, Halo Infinite's director, Chris Lee, has left the project. Um, which is, I mean, yeah. it, it's kind of hard to take because, yeah, with, you know, with the, the Halo and or like the Halo reveal and like people hated it for the most part. Um, and then, of course, it got delayed a few weeks later. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of a little worrisome to like see where this project is. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I, yeah, but because for someone to to leave you know it's kind of like the tail end of the project i don't know maybe, maybe he thinks i mean because he, you know he said like he, you know he's leading the team and he feels like the, the project's in good hands and this and that but it's still like a little bit worrisome for a fan and someone who really wants the new halo to be you know really good um yeah i don't i just don't know where this game is gonna be and who knows when we'll see it i mean they say 2021 but we'll see i don't know that would be such a bummer if it got delayed any further than that. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm a little worried about this game because, well, for one, we don't know if, if Chris Lee was kind of pushed out or if he left on his own um, on his own merit or his own intentions. But yeah, but having a director leave like near the end of a project or or in the middle of a project is yeah, it's never good. It's a little worrying. Yeah, yeah, never never a great thing, you know. Yeah, <laughs> he's probably trying to you know get out of the mess that's happening at, at three, four, three. I mean, it sounds like, it sounds like they're kind of going through it right now. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds like it, man. I, I, I mean, I don't know if they shot themselves in the foot by choosing to release this game on current gen or, or what, but I mean, there, there's something going on over there that, that we obviously don't know about. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I feel for that team. Just like, just like CD project red. I mean, I'm sure they're, you know, and heavy crunch and just, I, I don't know. It's been, it's been crazy for Halo, but, but hopefully they can, uh, you know, invest some money into this thing. And cause I mean, this ca- this game can't be, I mean, with the way that, you know, Master Chief Collection started and, and it's come a long way. I mean, it's fantastic now, but I mean, that was horrible when it first came out. Yeah. Um, and then just, I mean, Halo 5's multiplayer is excellent, but the story, not so much. So I just, I think the next Halo has to be, like, fantastic. So hit hard on, on both sides. Yeah, so we'll we'll see. But, but yeah, kind of a, ne- never good to hear when a director leaves a project. No, never, never good. But in other news, Resident Evil 3 Cloud version potentially coming to the Switch, it it kind of got leaked on like the cloud website for uh, for control 
which is really weird because you wouldn't think those two would ever be on the same website, but but it looks right. like it was kind of leaked. So I mean, we could be seeing more yeah. more cloud games come to the Switch, which I mean, ultimately is is a good thing, right? Because otherwise, these games wouldn't be setting foot on the Switch hardware at all. Yeah, no, that yeah, that's that's cool that they can. I mean, more more ways for to games to get to come to the Switch. So yeah, I mean. I think we'll really see how well these, you know, control and Hitman work. And then I think a, a more developers will probably, you know, um, jump jump on board and get their games that would never be able to run on the Switch properly um, into hands yeah. of Switch owners. So that's cool. Yeah. And, and this has kind of been happening in Japan for a while because they had RE7 mm -hmm. and Assassin's Creed Odyssey on the Switch via, yeah. via cloud. So... I mean, people know it works, and if it's Cloud and, and Stadia, like, like obviously something's something's going right. So like having this, having this cloud capability for the Switch kind of sets it up to compete. Yeah. Um, in next gen, because you can just you know make the game available on the cloud. Exactly. Like potentially, like Cyberpunk available via cloud on Switch, or somehow they port it over. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, you just wouldn't be able to play this thing like, you know, obviously like in a car or something where you don't have access to Wi-Fi. So that's like kind of like the only bummer with cloud-based services and stuff like that. So, yeah. but and, and this question I kind of posed for the end, but I can I can go ahead and ask it now. Um, do you like the concept of cloud gaming on the Switch, and would you like to see more games in the future? If so, which which games would you like to see? Yeah, I mean, like, if, if it works, and it works properly, and you kind of don't really see, like, any hitches or anything, then yeah, I mean, bring bring whatever whatever works. Um, like I just said, with the negative, just you, ha you have to be online to do it. So, um, you know, you're going to have to have good Wi-Fi, or um, if you have the uh, capability to hardwire it into your, you know, network, then do it that way. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, as far as the game, what games I would want to see, uh, I don't really know because I mean most of the games that I probably would want to see on the Switch I've already played, um, and I don't really double dip too much. Um, yeah, I guess this would be more appealing to someone who just has a Switch. Yeah, or... like what games would you want to see on there? Um, yeah, that there that you know would be no way of being able to, you know, something like Cyberpunk or something like that where you know you might be hyped up for it, but you know you can't. Um, you know, obviously you can't play it on the Switch because there's just no way that's going to run. Or, I mean, maybe maybe making the ability to have your current games run on, like, cloud, like, instead of having to have them downloaded to your to your Switch itself, maybe have that option uh, would be space. cool. Yeah, save some yeah. space. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think cloud gaming is just, that's kind of the future. And uh, it seems like everybody's kind of getting on board with it and, and having their own cloud services and stuff like that. So, mm. yeah. What about like, what about something like um, Call of Duty, Warzone, or Apex Legends? Like, do you think those would work on on cloud? Like, can can you can you stream a multiplayer game? Yeah, I think so. You think so? Okay, I just haven't heard of that much from from Stadia, or I guess any of the other cloud services. Yeah, I know. I know. Like Stadia has multiplayer games on there. I don't know okay. uh, as far as like fighting games i don't know how much like how much of a lag that would be how much that would affect it but yeah i'd, I'd imagine like something like warzone would be able to run and i'm surprised like i'm kind of surprised that it already isn't on the switch but maybe it's just too much of a beast to run on switch yeah um but i think i mean especially it being like a free app or something you know you would just download the 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 starter or the launcher for for it and then you know just obviously just stream it from there but yeah i mean something like call of duty or or you need a connection anyways. To yeah. So, like, yeah. Why not, you know? Yeah, that'd be cool. Hmm. Yeah. I, I, I kind of hope we'll see more of that in the future because that will just open open the platforms up so much more. Yeah, exactly. For that. Yeah. All right, you want to go ahead um, and read the last story? Yeah, yeah. Last story, Retro Games is expanding their HQ with a uh, roughly $500,000 investment. And they've also hired a rock star vet to come onto the team. So they're 
dude, they're on a freaking hiring spree, getting everyone from everywhere coming in and working on their game. And it sounds like this game's like still in pretty early stages to me. No, just refresh my memory. What who, what what does retro games make, or what are they making? Oh, sorry, they make they make Metroid. Okay, Metroid okay, Metroid okay, Prime cool. 4. Sweet. Yeah. So okay. that, that's I mean that game got kind of restarted in in January of 2019. Yeah. So it's been it's been in development for two years now, just about two years, maybe a little bit more depending on the timing. But um, yeah, that game still could be in early development based off of their their hiring spree. Yeah, I, I wouldn't imagine we see this game for another two years or something like that. Do you think this game would be like a Switch Pro? launch title or like a switch to launch title even i don't know i mean with i, I think the pro is going to come out next year okay I like and i th- and i think i think it'll come like i don't know i've got a feeling that it's going to come out in like march or april of next year i don't know we'd hear about that soon if that's the case yeah i mean maybe, maybe we get like a i don't know a, a direct sometime this month or next month um so, yeah, I mean, me. I mean, it's just the pro version, so I don't know. I mean, how much marketing they're gonna need for it? Like, you know, a normal console, norm- normally stuff gets announced, and then it's like a year and some change later before we see the console in the market. So, um, I don't know, uh, but may- maybe they'll hold off until next year for next holiday or something like that. Maybe, and especially with COVID, maybe that's impacted that, but. Um, oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I don't think it'll be a launch game for that because I, I think the pro is coming out sometime next year. Okay. I think we're about due. You know, we're I think we're due for another model, right? I mean, it's been four years since the Switch. Uh, yeah, yeah, about about four years. A bit, a bit coming up on four years. Um, next good. next year. So, what, do I want three switches? <laughs> I don't play this light anymore. <laughs> I haven't played in a while. Yeah, that's kind of like where it's yeah, it's um, yeah. I don't know because like I feel like I would might get a pro just that th- depending on the capabilities, and then I would just give my switch to to Kaylee. That way she could have a, a docked version if she needed it. Um, but yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. It just depend depending on what what it looks like, and I don't know. I, I don't know if like the form factor is going to change at all. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'm definitely excited to see it if, if you know if the rumors are true, but but I don't know if it'll I'm be. Sure, a, I'm sure they are. Yeah, I, I don't know if I don't know if it'll be a day one for me, because um, I don't imagine they're going to have like an exclusive game. Like I, I don't think like Breath of the Wild two would be exclusive to this thing. That'd just be insane. Um, but yeah, I mean if it's if it's a more powerful system. I'd like to see what it looks like. Right. I don't know. Like, I kind of wish they would just go all in on a Switch 2 at this point and kind of be caught up in terms of a, a generational leap. Yeah, I mean, that's the problem with Nintendo. Is they're, they're, Even their newest consoles are always behind, <laughs> like, everything. So it's yeah. it's – I just don't expect that from Nintendo anymore. I don't expect them to be – I mean, ever since, like, the, the Wii, right? I mean, the GameCube, PS2, Xbox were kind of all – pretty much like for and for for a lot of like for a lot of stuff like the gamecube was like the best running uh pla- you know b- best running platform for the, most games so uh ever since then i mean like nothing has really i mean most third party don't put stuff out on the switch it's only here recently or not on the switch just nintendo in general um and even so i mean you don't yeah. you don't have your you know you're not going to have your assassin's creeds and your Call of Duty's on Switch right now just because it can't run it. You'll have Assassin's Creed from 2013. Yeah. On Switch. So, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's tough. It's it's tough being in their spot because, you know, the Switch is doing great, but yeah. they also have to think about next gen in some capacity, even if they're not meeting those those power you know power thresholds they still at least got to compete in some way i think yeah but, but maybe and i just i just don't i mean i don't i don't think the next console is going to be called like or the next major leap is going to be a switch too they'll they'll do something different i think they'll they'll probably definitely have like 
it'll be similar to the Switch because I mean the Switch is just such a, a cool thing and it's taken off so well. Um, but though I think there'll be something different about it. Um, I think a Pro makes sense right now. I don't know if we necessarily need um, a new like console, but I don't know. I guess anything surprising, right? I mean, like like I like like you said, it, it would be cool if we just could get the newest, the latest and newest thing instead of like a you know a halfway like a, yeah, upgrade, half um, yeah, half step. But I think they'll probably fall in the shoes of Xbox and Sony, or you know PlayStation with the pros, the pro lineup. So, right. and then we'll and then we'll see something in a couple of years after that with with the newest, the latest and greatest of Nintendo. Man, I really hope they don't stray too far from the Switch. Yeah, I, I don't either. I think the Switch is pretty awesome. Just improve the controllers. Get rid yeah. of that um that drift. Yeah. And. And then hopefully they do some really cool stuff next year with Zelda and the, their 35th anniversary. Um, yeah, yeah, man. That's that's coming up pretty soon. I think we're going to... Ho- and hopefully we get, like... I mean, because, like, I, and I'm assuming COVID probably affected it, too, but, like, we got this, the Mario celebration so far into the year. Like, I really hope we get, like, a nice staggering of um, games. Like, maybe, you know, sometime in, like, February, March, we get, I don't know, Ocarina of Time or you know majora's mask or something like a remake or whatever or a collection i don't know um, i think we'll get a collection of probably yeah a lot of time and they'll probably leave out a game and people are gonna get mad and then they'll have skyward sword hd as a separate game for 60 bucks yeah i think they'll, they'll, they'll think do that go. yeah we'll get the skyward sword uh you know remaster and then maybe maybe the year ends with breath of the wild 2 or something that'd be that'd be super cool so yeah, my question is: Would they bundle um, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD together, or would they just sell those separately? I don't know, because I mean, what you've got right: Ocarina of Time, Adora's Mask, Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, and then uh, Skyward Sword mm-hmm. as like the the 3D Zeldas. So I mean, that's a lot of that's a lot of games to bundle together, and you know, it's not like Mario. Mario is not a super long game, like 64. I mean, you can beat that like under five hours if you really wanted to. So, right. um, they're not super long games, but th- yeah, these games are a lot bigger, um, a lot longer. Um, do, do you think we just get a port of Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, or do you think we get a remake? It's interesting. Maybe maybe they'll open up like, maybe they'll like maybe they'll unlock the the Nintendo like the sixty four collection for. Like um, uh, Nintendo Switch Online, and then they just add like Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time, or like one of the first games added, or something like that, in celebration. And then maybe we get like, I don't know, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess bundled together, or or maybe or maybe we'll get them all separate. I don't really know. Um, I just don't know if they can get away with doing Wind Waker for sixty dollars again. No, I don't. I don't think so. Free time, yeah. I, I don't, and I don't know if I would. I would want. I, dude, I, 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 don't, I don't know if I can because I got I got Wind Waker for, for the Wii U. So like, and Twilight Princess. So, <laughs> it, it's hard to justify paying it again, but if they're bundled together, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's Zelda. So that's, like, that's the shitty part about being a Wii U owner is you kind of. It's like, yeah, I've already played these games before. Why are they getting re-released? Yeah, but I want, I want them. I want them on my Switch. Yeah, but, but I want them. Yeah. Um. I don't know. Either way, very excited. Whether they just port Ocarina of Time or, or remake it or remaster it. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd love to see like, like maybe like a, a remake of um, like Minish Cap or one of the the Oracle of Seasons or Ages, something like that yeah. would be really cool. Like a la, um, uh, what was it? Uh, oh, Link's Awakening. Link's Awakening. Something like that it would be really cool. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know, just something like kind of out of left field, or may- maybe putting like a link to the past or uh, link between worlds on the Switch would be really cool. Yeah, I-, I definitely think they have more opportunity with the Zelda anniversary than they do with Mario in terms of like what they can do with like art style or yeah. Remakes exactly and, and ports and there's just a lot there's a lot of content like a lot of zelda content that can be brought over yeah switch whether it's through links um, crossbow training like, like that would be a nice little 
Dude, hell yeah. Just, hey, that should be like the only thing we, we get for the entire anniversary. <laughs> Happy uh, so 35 years. Here's Link's Crossbow training. They call it um, Link's Crossbow 35. You play against 35 other players and you're just trying to snipe each other from across Hyrule that, Field. That'd be pretty awesome. <laughs> I'd be cool with that. I think... Oh wait! Speaking of speaking of thirty five, do you think we'll have like a Zelda Dungeon Crawler thirty five s game? Or do you think I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about that. Um, okay. I mean, maybe. I mean, I don't. I don't know how they would do it. I mean, obviously they would. They would do it like two uh, D or whatever. Um, but I mean, n- none of the other Zelda games are like on a tr- like you know like Mario, other than Zelda two. So do Zelda two. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they would be able to get away with that or pull that off. I should say, uh, but yeah, I mean, 3D. Like, I'm I'm excited, man. It's 35 years of Zelda, so I mean, hopefully they do some. Hopefully they got some really cool stuff planned. Right. I'm excited to see what what E3 next year looks like if it yeah. happens because their booth will be top notch with yeah. Zelda 35. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll, I might have to like buy a T-shirt or something, yeah. or ho- or like a hoodie or something. Oh, yeah. If they sell it, big fan of the Zelda hoodies. Yeah, well, I lost my other one, so I'm a little mad. You lost it. Yeah, my Ocarina of Time one. Oh, they get them ran away. I don't know what happened to it. I think I like we went to a fair last year for Halloween, and I think I left it there. Damn. Yeah, I'm bummed. But Sucks. oh well. But yeah, I think that's going to uh, wrap up the show. Um, 50 episodes, man, feels good. 50 episodes. The next time you'll be hearing from us, it'll. It might be the eve of the Series X launch. So, so is, is, is that what we're going to plan on doing Tuesday night? Well, eve or, will be Monday night. Well, yeah, you're right, right. So are, are we just going to do it Monday night like like normal um, and then get like, a, get like a solid week with the console and then talk about it the next time? I don't know. Part of me wants to like... Maybe, maybe we could just, just do like a, like a little 30-minute stream or something okay, yeah let's let's plan let's plan to do like our normal monday and then we'll do like a little 30 minute like kind of like impressions of the series x because well like because like, i was gonna take the day off and i, I think i've talked about this before but i just don't know when i'll get it so i don't want to like take the day off and don't eat the console at like three or four mm-hmm. and then just i could have just worked you know and saved saved the day do you get veterans day off we it's november 11th it's called a floating holiday. Okay. So technically, we're we're open. We're open that day, but you can but you can use that day to on Veterans Day or any time after. So, um, so but technically we're we're open that day. But gotcha. Yeah, but we're usually slow anyways because like a lot of people think we're we're closed because most places are. But, um, okay. so yeah, I, I I still don't know what I'm gonna do. I may, I may take the day off. I may not. I don't know. Okay. I know the day after is blocked off for for whatever reason, so I can't take the day after off. So that kind of sucks. You can't but, take November twelfth. Yeah, or November eleventh off. Well, eleventh is Veterans Day, right? Maybe that's why we can't. Okay, that's probably why we can't take it off. Yeah, it's part. It's probably already booked up. Um, so yeah, I can't take the eleventh off, which was would be the day I probably want to anyways. Right. But um. But yeah, we'll we'll plan on doing that. We'll do our normal show next Monday, um, or Sunday, depending on if you, if you think you're gonna be busy or not. And then, um, cause that, that's probably what kind of happened, right? Like going forward for a while, just yeah, just I mean, what we'll plan on we'll plan on doing it Monday, but if we need to switch it up, we'll we'll do, we'll, we'll do the other day, um, and then Tuesday we'll do like a quick, um, you know, I don't know, maybe like around yeah, same, like, yeah, yeah, around the same time, same time, eight thirty. We'll we can do a quick stream and see how we're show, like our, show yeah the console a little bit yeah just like a quick quick like 30 minute impression of it and you know yeah. that'd be cool so all right all right that is going to uh do the show and um yeah nick where, where can they follow us at twitter at uh they can follow us at gaming wt bros on twitter i posted um a little a little guess that amiibo okay there the other day yeah, yeah. i saw that yeah, I put the blinds over the amiibo, and it kind of <laughs> makes it tricky to guess what it is. So, so check that out and and let me know. Uh, let me know which amiibo you think. Yeah, I think I think it'd be really cool. Like, once we get like more followers on Twitter and uh, more more like 
people watching the show to do like a maybe like a weekly or every other week or something like a community stream where we play with like the or not a stream necessarily but like a we would play with the community like play some games or something um that'd be that'd be really cool um but yeah and then of course you can email us as well at gaming with the bros at yahoo.com same thing send us um you know messages um you know any improvements you you want to have for the show or you know suggestions stuff like that um yeah all that all that good stuff and uh if you can leave us a nice review um or or a bad review whatever whatever you want to just leave a review on your favorite podcasting platform and um if you've got any friends that listen to podcasts and uh you think would like the show um spread spread the word show some love show the support and uh yeah that'd be, that'd be awesome and, and much appreciated i think we're getting close to almost 700 downloads so that's pretty cool dang that's pretty, that's pretty good yeah so Get to a thousand before we know it yeah yeah definitely that'd be awesome it would be pretty sweet but yeah nick any uh any final thoughts you want to have you know i'm just i'm just so pumped for this next gen yep one more yeah. one more week and we'll we'll be there it's gonna be it's exciting we'll get our refrigerator Oh, I did sign up for that sweet steaks. Oh, did you? <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm going to do if I get a big fridge, but. <laughs> I mean, that'd be pretty awesome. Yeah. You could put your Xbox in the Xbox. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'll put my old Xbox in there and let it let it freeze. Yeah, right. <laughs> Farewell. Farewell. A little hyperbolic time chamber for my Xbox One. Exactly. <laughs> you put your Xbox One, it comes out of Series X. <laughs> But yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> that, that's it. That's where we're into the show. It was, it's been fun. 50 episodes, man. Woohoo. Woohoo. <laughs> All right, guys. See you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye.